I do want to wrap with a key takeaway from each of you on what colleges and um, can do or can how colleges can benefit from or a takeaway or a solution rather that you hope that today's viewers um, get from this conversation. We'll start with John. Yeah, sure. Uh, David. Sorry. So I, I've talked about narrative already. Um, as a therapist, I, I, I rely on narrative uh, therapy and theoretical principles, um, knowing that when we think about mental health for people of color, there's a certain narrative that pathologizes, overly pathologizes people of color, invalidates people of color, um, takes a univer universalistic um, perspective treating people of color through a colorblind lens, right? And that just causes more harm. So my takeaway and, and kind of a challenge is that we need to, to change this narrative of mental health for people of color and for everyone by talking about it more overtly, right? Having it a part of, someone mentioned having it on a syllabus, right? Um, encouraging um, people to discuss their mental health needs, um, their mental health um, uh, stories, Right? My, my idea of mental health and healing is not the same as anybody else. So taking a culturally relative, per, or culturally humble perspective where I'm going to want to first understand the perspective from the person I'm working with. And so I encourage everybody who's either here or watching this to have at least one conversation about your mental health today. Right? One conversation. That can have a lot of power for you cathartically in terms of releasing something, but it can be a great role model for somebody else to possibly take that first step to seek out support. Stephanie? That's really a great idea. Um, one of the most effective ways of reducing stigma is hearing directly from people like the lived experience of the young brother and the young people who spoke earlier today. I want to, my takeaway is specifically for students and I want to speak to any student um, who's tuning in uh, to this uh, to this panel. Any student who might be experiencing um, a level of distress that's persistent or that's so significant that they're having difficulty functioning, if they're feeling persistent feelings of hopelessness, thoughts of hurting yourself, urges to attempt um, suicide. It's important to know that you may very well have a common mental illness and um, it's not your fault. These illnesses are very common and they're very treatable. And so I want to encourage you to remember that you earned the right to matriculate on that college campus within that college community wherever you are and strongly encourage you not to let anyone or anything get in the way of receiving the proper support and potentially treatment that you deserve. I would add two things. One is I, I think we need to understand mental health uh, comprehensively in, in the larger context of individuals' lives. So we do need to provide a treatment and so on, but we need to think what we do with the larger environment. How do we build uh, job readiness and service learning opportunities so that individuals feel empowered and feel they have skills to look to the future? And my second challenge specifically for universities, in this moment of U.S. history, universities need to exercise greater leadership in, in confronting some of the myths and mythologies and the environment that's creating all of this hostility. I, in the last six months, I have become a member for I don't know why. I receive every three or four weeks an email from a white supremacist group. Um, it, it's a long diatribe. What is disturbing about it is that it appears credible. They're citing studies, they're citing sources, they're citing newspaper articles. If you read it, it looks completely reasonable and evidence-based. What are we doing as academic institutions to confront this diatribe that's out there within our <coughs> communities and within our larger societies? And I would close with, uh, I would speak to institutions as well and institutional leadership and, and say that institutions are like individuals that is, uh, who we were is still a part of who we are. And if most institutions that we're talking about here were born in a time of segregation and racial hate and we were kind of situated that way, then we need to examine ourselves right now and discover the degree to which who we were is still a part of who we are and make sure that we are now positioning everyone who comes to our campus to thrive.